Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to be starting this video out discussing Intel, specifically their ARC range of GPUs, as a benchmark has appeared in the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark database. For the rest of the video, I'm going to call it Ashes for everyone's sanity. Now, while the performance results are interesting in and of themselves, this does also provide us a great indicator that Intel are actually going to meet their promise of launching these cards early next year. It's, of course, rumored to be Q1 that ARC is going to debut. Now, personally speaking, and Intel haven't clarified necessarily on this point, I've been hearing still that we're going to see mobile first and then later desktop, although I'm also getting some sources that are telling me the reverse and that both are going to launch simultaneously. What I am hearing, though, is Intel are getting some good responses from AIBs. They're going to actually have some pretty good cooperation from the AIB partners. This is not really surprising, given companies like Asus, MSI, and so on have already good ties with Intel for products like motherboards. So naturally this would be a perfect extension of that. And I've already discussed a few times already on the channel how um, you know we're gonna see some really interesting marketing from Intel when it comes to their uh, mobile market is marketing as well because naturally you know Intel want to push Intel graphics and Intel processors quite extensively and it's gonna be very curious to me how the market itself is going to be responding Nonetheless, we're now going to take a look at the benchmark which has leaked. Now, the Ashes benchmarks are not necessarily the most accurate in the world, so it is worth noting that because, for example, with the score that we have here around 12,500 points, which is around 127 frames per second, this is a 1080p medium. Unfortunately, if we had higher quality settings, it would be perhaps a little better, but you know, at these kind of uh, performance results, you can both see the RTX 3080 Ti, yay! And also an RX 6700 XT. So obviously that is a massive gulf in performance. The rumor is that these cards are gonna be around RTX 3070, RTX 3070 Ti in terms of gaming performance. This is something I've been hearing for a while. But of course, the real feature of these cards is that they are, well, fully featured. So things like variable rate shading, mesh shaders, hardware-based ray tracing, and perhaps the feather in Intel's cap is going to be XESS, which is, of course, their upsampling solution. It's going to be very curious to me how all of this plays out in the grander scheme of things. After all, we're still quite a while um, away before launch, and Intel have already demoed XESS to you know us with a couple of games uh, developers on board. So it's going to be interesting to see how all of this plays out in the in the grander scheme of things. And yeah, um, Intel though you know apart from that have also kind of confirmed the naming schemes of their GPUs, and this is actually courtesy of well an Intel graphics driver. Uh, the driver itself is a test driver, and it's 30.0.101.9999. And I'm not going to read out all of the SKUs, because quite frankly, you can see them on screen yourself. But we have an A380, which is logically the highest end part, and then the lowest end is going to be the XCA200M. Now, obviously, we can quite easily see that the M series is going to obviously be mobile and then the non-M series is obviously not going to be mobile it's going to be desktop parts I'm again very curious to see our Intel fare in the market it's definitely going to be a very weird year next year I think with all of the parts that are launching not just in terms of the CPUs but also GPUs and just across the board it's going to be extremely curious I suspect well if anything, I'm happy that there is a third player in the graphics market, you know, at the end of the day, that can only be good for us. I do suspect it will be, you know, a generation or so before Intel are really able to compete in the high-end stakes, but even so, you know, even in the mid-range, and if you can call an RTX 3070 Plus mid-range performance, I don't know, what do you guys call mid-range for the current, current cards, like the, you know, the RTX 30 series, for example, what do you classify as mid-range? Do you think the 3060 Ti is, 3070. It's kind of interesting given the prices, of course. It's kind of weird. And now we're going to move over from Intel to NVIDIA, specifically the RTX 3090 Ti has actually had a leaked 
image appear online for its box. Credit, by the way, to IT Home for this discovery. I'll, of course, link that article in the video description. So this is an Asus Tough Gaming GPU, and again, you can see quite clearly that it is an RTX 3090 Ti. The rumor is that these cards are going to launch with 450 watts of TDP, and this is possibly a reason that it looks like, to me anyway, there is additional fan blades on this specific design. Now, obviously, 450 watts is an eye-watering amount. However, that's also roughly what I'm hearing RDNA 3 is going to be for the next generation, although it's possible that RTX 40 is going to be even higher. Uh, obviously, at the end of the day, power consumption is going to be going up with the next generation. So... That's the thing. I mean, I, I guess this also kind of brings another question to mind. Like, what's too much for you guys? Like, do you actually give a crap about power consumption of your cards? Does it really bother you? Or does it not? I suppose it also kind of depends on the form factor you're aiming for. If it's a small form factor device, then yeah, 450 watts might be a bit ambitious. Not least of which for the power supply. And, you know, at the end of the day, we've discussed the performance metrics already a couple of times on the channel, as well as the specifications, and there is going to be definitely additional memory bandwidth thanks to the clock frequencies of the memory increasing, the uh, capacity of the memory and bus width and all of that stuff, however, is identical, and there is, of course, that small increase in the number of CUDA cores. It's not been confirmed yet regarding the clock frequency of the cores themselves, whether we're going to be seeing an increase there or not. I've been hearing that there is a slight increase, which could also help explain the higher TDP, but then again, the fact that they're running the memory faster and the fact that there is additional CUDA cores and all of that stuff could also help explain it. So, you know, I would love it if there's additional clock frequency because that's great, but yeah, you know, we'll see. This is going to be a very interesting part in terms of how uh, NVIDIA market it. And the rumor is that they will be announcing this early next year. And I've been hearing that NVIDIA's plans, as you know, I've said a couple of times, are just really in flux at the moment with various parts like the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte. It's so hard to keep track of all of the SKUs and names and stuff in my head. But yeah, the, the 12 gigabyte card is also, you know, rumored to be launched in CES. And I was told it's not going to be at CES. And now it is going to be at CES. Who knows? At the end of the day, NVIDIA really, the, the, car, the product I am pretty sure will be there is the refresh of the RTX 30 series. And at the end of the day, as you know, I alluded to earlier on in this video, NVIDIA and um, NVIDIA and AMD, excuse me, are both facing a lot of pressure at the moment from uh, Intel in the mobile market. And I suspect that that's going to be really the area that Intel focuses on most initially, uh, especially given the performance of their products. It does make sense. It's going to be very curious, I suspect, how gamers are going to be kind of embracing each of the three companies with that said though hopefully you have enjoyed the video if you did then well you know what to do leave a likey and i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now